and welcome back to my little corner of the internet. My name is Lilith and for today's video we're going to make blueberry muffin top cookies. So a while back the bundle company put together a bundle of 50 ebooks with tons of vegan cookbooks, minimalist, zero waste, and stuff like that all together and I bought it and I've been using the books to flip through for inspiration for my menu each week if you didn't know. I make and deliver food here in Austin, so so if you live in Austin, check out my Instagram. I post the menu each week, take orders, and then deliver on Tuesdays. So if you're interested in buying food straight from me, check that out. So this week we'll be recreating one of the recipes from one of these books. This recipe comes from the Epic Plant Powered Kids Food Cookbook, which I feel like is a really interesting and great idea. Vegan food directed for kids. But honestly, I'm just a big kid, so I want these cookies. This book is by Ellen Fisher, and I know of her, but I've never really watched her stuff. Some of y'all may know her, so we're going to recreate this one today and see if it's as delicious as it claims to be. And one more thing before we jump into this recipe, I am working with a company called Formulate. They make custom shampoo and conditioner, and there's a link down in the description box to enter a free giveaway so you can win a free custom shampoo and conditioner. One of the things I really like about that company is they take your zip code and then they look at what the weather is in your area and they take that into consideration when creating your formula. Here in Austin, it's summertime, it's really hot, it's really humid, and it's very hard to control the frizz. So I'm very excited. I'm about to get my first shipment from them. Hopefully it will help control this mess. All right. Now that all that's out of the way, we're going to jump into this recipe. I'm also going to be making a two time of this recipe. The original recipe only makes 12 cookies and I'm going to be making 24. A couple other things, I'm using frozen bananas because I do not have any ripe fresh bananas right now. When my bananas get really ripe, I freeze them so these will work just fine. And I'm also going to be using almond butter instead of tahini because I ran out of tahini yesterday kind of upset with myself, but hopefully almond butter will work, we're going to find out. And then something special I'm doing with these cookies because for people that ordered on my menu this week, if you donated to one of the Black Lives Matter charities, I'm giving away free cookies, so I'm also going to be sprinkling some bourbon vanilla sugar on top just to give it a little extra, just to make it a little extra special. So for this recipe, you will need oats, dates, applesauce, baking powder, baking soda, bananas, cinnamon, vanilla, salt, tahini, or almond butter, and then the sprinkle of sugar on top is optional. Like I said, it's just something special I'm doing. You'll also need frozen blueberries. I have those in the freezer. I'm going to take those out when we're ready for them. So I love a super easy recipe where you just blend the ingredients up, and that is Definitely what this is. And how do I know how much bananas is a whole banana I've measured before? I will speed this up here because it will take me a while to pit all of these dates. Okay, now my hands are all sticky. Now we're going to add the almond butter. Remember, the original recipe is tahini, but we're using almond butter because that's what I have. And sometimes that's what you gotta do when you're cooking. Use what you have. We're going to add our baking soda and baking powder. one 
critique I have with this book so far. You should never, ever, ever write three teaspoons. Three teaspoons equals one tablespoon, and one tablespoon is way easier to measure out than three teaspoons. It'll mix all together just fine. Things are just falling apart over here. I have to get into my backup stash of oats real quick. Okay, the oats have been refilled. starting to think it probably makes more than that, or it could make more than that. They're probably pretty big cookies. Alright, mix these two up properly. Now we're going to mix in the rest of our oats, and we're going to mix in our blueberries. mix these blueberries in too much because it will turn the dough, it will turn the batter gray. It's uh, looking like it's too late for that though. Okay, it says to dollop large spoonfuls on 
a tray with parchment paper. You know, I like to use these silicone mats because it's less wasteful. And since we're doing cookies, it already has where each cookie should go on there. I'm really hoping this doesn't like run together because it seems to be a very thin dough. It seems to be a very thin batter. So I'm a little bit worried about it all just like together. Maybe it needs a minute for the oats to absorb. I don't know. This doesn't seem like it really works. y'all to watch out for when buying these like influencer cookbooks when they're from people that are not chefs they haven't necessarily tested these recipes as rigorously as needed and so you might think oh well it didn't work out because I don't know what I'm doing but I'm doing this as a chef like I do this for a living and some of these recipes from these books just don't work and they haven't been really tested the way they should be. Or they're not as in depth and don't really tell you exactly what the person does. Like this one, it's very thin and, and it doesn't really, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. bake this though and I'm gonna hope it works with the extra oat flour. I kind of want to add even more oat flour but I know these are supposed to be muffin top cookies so they're supposed to be a little soft. And like I said maybe you're supposed to let the oats absorb more? I really don't know. This seems like it's gonna make way more cookies than 24 and the recipe says it makes so the recipe is called muffin top cookies but it says it makes 12 cupcakes so I can see this amount of batter making 24 cupcakes but the recipe tells you how to make cookies and so I'm wondering if if this was labeled wrong or something like that because it was the right consistency for cupcakes, but it's not really the right consistency for cookies. That is my concern. Like I said, not all of these influencer books are bad. I have like some of the recipes in some of the books, but some of them, like this one, don't really turn out the way you think that they're supposed to. I think I want to continue going through these cookbooks and kind of seeing what recipes work and what recipes don't and maybe fixing some of them that don't. I don't know. If you're going to sell a cookbook, your recipe should work. Unpopular opinion. Okay, I will check back with y'all whenever these
these cookies are supposedly done and we'll see if this actually worked out. Okay, they are out. They've been sitting on this cooling rack for a minute. Um, I did not show y'all that I forgot to put the sugar on, so I pulled them out real quick and sprinkled the bourbon sugar on it. And I got that bourbon sugar from Maggie's Micros. I'll leave a link to their website down below. You can order from them online. Usually I buy their stuff at the farmer's market, but they have not been at the farmer's market all of quarantine, and I've had to buy vanilla extract at the grocery store like three times. Yes, I use a lot of vanilla extract, and I run out of it often, and I need, their, I need them to be back at the farmer's market. So... Overall, they turned out all right. Um, they are pretty soft. I see why they're called like muffin top cookies because they, they do have that like soft muffin like texture. The ones that are in the muffin pan are in the oven and they're almost done. They actually look really, really nice as muffins. So if you're going to make these as muffins, you can stick to the original recipe that she has. But if you want to make them cookies, I would definitely say half the water or even less or add more oat flour like I did, they will just stay in clumps a little bit better as, as you try to make them into cookies instead of like kind of spreading out into a one giant cookie because we don't want that, we want individual cookies. So I haven't tasted them yet, but I'm going to take one from the bottom here because they've been cooling longer and I'm going to try it. It does kind of taste like a muffin, so like muffin cookies. I will say the flavor is really nice. So points for flavor, minus points for the recipe kind of being a little bit weird. Almond butter worked really well on them. I'm not going to leave the full recipe down below because this is somebody else's recipe and I do not want to give away somebody else's intellectual property that I paid for, but if you want to go buy her ebook. I will leave a link to it down below. And I will also leave the tips on how to fix this recipe to make it actually work for cookies, for the muffin top cookies. Other than that, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Don't forget to click that link down below to enter to win a free shampoo and conditioner from Formulate. Like this video if you liked it. Let me know in the comments down below if you want me to do more of these review videos where I take somebody's recipe and make it and see if it actually works and give you tips and tricks on how to make it work if it doesn't or tips and tricks on just how to make it in general because sometimes reading a recipe from a book doesn't give you all of the detail that might make it easier to make. You could do a little recipes reviewed by a chef series or something like that. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you never miss a delicious recipe. And I'll see y'all next time. Bye, y'all. Wow, these as muffins actually look really good. So I guess this recipe is a two for one.